Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, with the morning and evening podcast, episode number six, where I read Charles Haddon Spurgeon's classic devotional with my family. So indeed, this is the White House family devotional reading that I do with my family. And uh, I would uh, venture to say that the Charles Spurgeon devotional based upon, squarely upon the Word of God. Uh, One of those devotionals that starts out reading uh, the Word of God, which is traditional and right among Baptists. We put the Word of God first. And so therefore, that's the main reason why I love it. Uh, But my daughter, Daniqua, uh, fell in love with it, Daniqua Grace White, some years ago for some reason as a young child. And she voluntarily on her own started putting it up on one of our sites. And I marveled at how many people would come every day just to read uh, Charles Spurgeon's classic devotional. And so Charles Spurgeon was a prominent English particular Baptist preacher, one of those preachers given uh, a huge platform by God with huge abilities, huge talents, and gifts, and just very few, very few preachers have been so gifted. He was very influential among the Christians of various denominations during his age and even today, and is commonly called the Prince of Preachers for good reason. After some time of alternately searching for God and running from God, he had a powerful encounter which led him to give his life to Christ. Uh, Dr. Spurgeon was only 16 when he preached his first sermon and he began publishing books shortly afterward. At the time of his death, he had preached nearly 3,600 sermons and published 49 volumes of commentaries, sayings, anecdotes, illustrations, and devotion. When I was a young preacher, I read his famous book, letters to my students, myself, uh, and what a blessing that was. Uh, Dr. Spurgeon said, encouraging thoughts are like honey to the heart, and wrote this devotional in hopes that its uplifting messages for each day of the year would bring comfort and refreshment to our walk with God. He was inspired by Isaiah 50, verse 4, which reads, He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. And Psalm 63, 5 through uh, 5 and 6, which says, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Today let's look at with Charles Haddon Spurgeon, he being dead yet speaketh. Luke chapter 3 verse 4. 
as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. The voice crying in the wilderness demanded a way for the Lord, a way prepared and a way prepared in the wilderness. I would be attentive to the Master's proclamation and give him a road into my heart, cast up my gracious operations through the desert of my nature. The four directions in the text must have my serious attention. Every valley must be exalted. Low and groveling thoughts of God must be given up. Doubting and despairing must be removed. And self-seeking and carnal delights must be forsaken. Across these deep valleys... A glorious causeway of grace must be raised. Every mountain and hill shall be laid low. Proud creature sufficiency and boastful self-righteousness must be leveled to make a highway for the king of kings. Divine fellowship is never vouchsafed. Divine fellowship is never vouchsafed to haughty, high-minded sinners. The Lord hath respect unto the lowly and visits the contrite in heart, but the lofty are an abomination unto him. My soul beseech the Holy Spirit to set thee right in this respect. The crooked shall be made straight. The wavering heart must have a straight path of decision. For God and holiness marked out for it. Double-minded men are strangers to the God of truth. My soul, take heed that thou be in all things honest and true as in the sight of the heart-searching God. The rough places shall be made smooth. Stumbling blocks of sin must be removed. And thorns and briars of rebellion must be uprooted. So great a visitor must not find miry ways and stony places. When he comes to honor his favored ones with his company. Oh, that this evening the Lord may find in my heart a highway made ready by his grace that he may make a triumphal progress through the utmost bounds of my soul from the beginning of this year even to the end of it. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word and we thank you for the thoughts of your servant, uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Your holy word is perfect Of course, we know that uh, Charles Spurgeon was not perfect and everything he wrote, therefore, because he's a sinner like the rest of us, was not perfect. But we thank you for his effort and we give you the glory, praise, and honor, Lord, for how you have used your servants to give us encouraging words based upon your holy word to keep on fighting the good fight of faith and holding up the blood-stained banner, one more day for the King of kings and Lord of lords and for the glory, praise, and honor 
of your holy name, dear God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, as he did, here is how you can be saved from the hell to come and walk with the Lord morning and evening in this life until you go to that wonderful place called heaven when you die. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty. There is a punishment for sin always. The Holy Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now. If you have never trusted, if you have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you have never received his free gift of salvation, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any prophet in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Why? Because he loves us and he wants to save us from that awful place so that we can go to heaven when we die. Jesus Christ said in one sermon in Matthew 18.8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Also, the Bible states in Revelation 21.8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and uh, whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, hell is bad news, dear friend, but I have some good news for you. You don't have to go to hell when you die. You can go to heaven. For Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, he suffered, he bled, and he died for your sins and for mine and for everybody in the world. He was buried and he rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul and he will save you. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to heaven. So, dear friend, if you want to trust Christ as your Savior today, so that you can avoid going to hell and go to heaven when you die. Pray this simple prayer with me called the Sinner's Prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart, believing in your heart on Jesus Christ. 
who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. I am sorry for my sins and today I choose to turn from my sins with your help. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried and rose on the third day. I do believe with all of my heart on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. Help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you in the new life. Lord Jesus, for it is in your name I pray. Amen. Dear friend, if you believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer.